you're not on that weight loss shot, are you? It's going to give you cancer. Well, if you've ever heard that, then this is going to be some really fun information to take back to those specific kinds of uninformed folks or just flat out haters of GLP-1 medications. We've got some breakthrough clinical trial data today that we're going to unpack and help you to have more competent and confident conversations with your naysaying friends, but more importantly, your medical provider as you seek out treatment for the chronic disease of obesity. Welcome to On the Pen. I'm Dave Knapp, man on the Manjaro. That's why I'm here. You are On the Pen with Govi, Saxenda, Victoza, Trulicity, Manjaro, Zetbound Compound. If you're new here, welcome. It's good to have you here. I would simply ask that you would subscribe to the channel. It's going to help make sure that you get all the pertinent information that we drop here at On the Pen, as well as checking us out at obesity.news on the web, obesity.news is a wonderful platform uh, where you can get emails directly to your inbox that gives you this type of information as it comes out so that you can have more competent and confident conversations with your doctor. You can also uh, follow us over on Instagram where we're fastly approaching 20,000 followers. Help us get there. If you're on Instagram, I'm at man on the Manjaro over there. So what did we learn today? Well, I think it's really important to unpack real quickly what post-marketing data is. What does that even mean? Well, po post-marketing data, consider it like a phase four clinical trial. There are three phases to clinical trials before they're ultimately approved by the FDA and brought to market. But once they are brought to market, we have this fantastic thing called phase four trials that help us do a couple of things. It It's not a randomized clinical control trial, but it's aggregate data of people that use medication so that we can identify things that are happening maybe with a medication that we didn't see in clinical trials. So how they do this is, is they take information again from EMR records or from clinics, hospitals, patients, and they're able to look at data for people who use specific medications over a much longer time frame than a trial. And then they use these tools uh, to, to basically spot rare safety issues or confirm maybe some benefits a drug may have outside of the narrow clinical trial scope that they were looking at and to find signals that might be worth exploring a little bit more deeply. You have that benefit when you're talking about tens of thousands of patients versus just a few thousand in the clinical trials. And today what we got is fresh evidence that GLP-1 medications might actually be lowering the risk of up to 14 different types of cancers. Now it's important to know that this is not a promise, it's just a signal that appeared in data, but we're going to talk about this data and why it's so important and it's so hopeful, especially uh, information that you may want to share with that person who thinks you're just going to get cancer because you're on that shot, right? So let's talk about it. What did they study? Well, researchers looked at electronic health records from a Florida, One Florida Plus, which is basically a large network that captures care across clinics and hospitals. So they took two subsets of adults with obesity and no prior cancer history from 2014 all the way to 2024. Okay. One group took a GLP-1 and the other group, although they qualified for one from an obesity standpoint, did not take it. So after careful matching, they were able to look at 43,317 GLP-1 users and then 43,315 non-GLP-1 users. So this is called a target trial emulation. It's a way to make observational data behave more like a random clinical trial while studying real world uh, happenings, right? So across 14 different types of cancers, the GLP-1 group in this study had fewer cancers overall. So the incidence rate worked out to 13.6 per thousand persons, uh, person years for people on GLP ones compared to 16.4 for those not on them. And this maps out to what's called a hazard ratio of 0.83, which is a meaningful reduction in cancers. The clearest signals were in endometrial cancers, ovarian cancer, and uh, meningioma, which was a, there was actually a small uptick for kidney cancers, uh, but didn't meet strong enough statistical certainty in this analysis. 
Uh, but the positive signal was in those 14 other cancers, including uh, endometrial and ovarian and meningioma, which were the top three where the clearest signals were seen. So if you prefer this all in plain language, what does this, what does this mean? Because this is just pulling from the data. Independent coverage framed it this way today as the, as the news broke. A big real world look tied to GLP-1 use uh, showed that there was a lower chance of getting cancer and it was the strongest in several women's cancer with a modest and uncertain nudge upward for kidney cancer that needs a closer look. So what does this all mean if you're taking a GLP-1? Well, you may not have started a GLP-1 specifically to prevent cancer. You started it probably to treat obesity or diabetes and to just get your life back. That's something that we talk about a lot at On The Pen. When we, we've told stories now from the community for almost three years, we've been highlighting this. And now many other creators are highlighting stories from around the world of people whose lives have been changed. They just got their life back with GLP-1. Uh, but this study suggests that there may be an added benefit in long-term cancer risk, especially if you're a woman uh, who carry the burden of specific endometrial and ovarian cancer risks. So what we can do is we can hold that hope and keep doing our daily work uh, that our body is asking us to do. Uh, we want to stay on our normal screening schedules. We want to keep our follow-ups. None of that actually changes, but there is a reduction in the chance of you developing these cancers. It doesn't mean that GLP-1s are cancer prevention drugs yet. And it, and it doesn't mean also that weight loss is the only reason for the signal, even though less visceral fat, lower insulin, and lower inflammation are all very plausible reasons why there was a reduction in these cancers. Ob observational designs like this study always leave room for a lot of unmeasured differences between the groups that it looks at. And even the authors themselves call for longer follow-up and more research before any guidelines actually change, which is obviously the right move. But for years, people living with the disease of obesity have, told, have been told that the disease of obesity raises their cancer risk. And usually they're not even told that kindly. Usually they're told, hey, if you don't lose weight, you're going to get cancer, <laughs> right? But if GLP-1 therapy is lowering that risk while also improving diabetes and sleep apnea and heart health, then access stops being this debate about lifestyle and a failure of morality, and it becomes a public health priority. And it helps the conversation be elevated above the conversation about vanity and into talking about families and years and quality of life and the cost of care that we carry together. So this is a really narrative elevating data point that I think is really, really exciting. So a careful analysis of more than 86,000 adults found fewer cancer among GLP-1 users. And that is the big takeaway. That's the big takeaway from this data. Obviously, the study doesn't prove causation and it doesn't change screening or anything like that, but it elevates the conversation because so many people have a hesitation to these medications because of bad information that has been disseminated about the potential risk of cancer. This is a huge study looking at thousands and th tens of thousands of patients that is showing us a signal that it may actually reduce cancer in people. Uh, if you want to check more out about this at obesity.news, I've got links to the JAMA study. I've got uh, other links there that you can kind of cross-reference information from. You can definitely do a deeper dive there. While you're there, just make sure that you sign up for email alerts because that is what's going to keep you in touch with all this information as we release it. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being the best part of what we do at On The Pen, and we will catch you on.